What's up guys, Jerry Wilson here, AKA The Dock Man. Today I'm gonna to show you what to look for when purchasing a used lift. Now before we get into any items on the lift itself, I'm gonna tell you the two things that are overlooked right out of the gate time and time again. How much does my boat weigh and how long is my boat? Obviously those are gonna be your two biggest items that you need to get a read on before you start going into the used market and trying to find something to put that boat on. After you know how long the boat is, how wide the boat is, how heavy the boat is, now you can start looking for a lift. The first thing that I look for when I walk up to a lift is the structural rigidity. When I say structural rigidity, I'm referring to welds and the framework itself. The first thing I do is get down and figure out how these welds look. Is there any cracking? Are they separating? Were they never good in the first place? And are they pulling off of the extrusions themselves? That can either mean one, the lift's been beaten up pretty good, Two, it wasn't ever built well in the first place. Or three, the customer's overloading the lift with a boat that's way too heavy for it. The next item as far as structural rigidity is going to be the framework. I take a look at the lower frame first and I make sure everything looks straight level square. What you see when a boat's getting overloaded is this lower frame either buckling in or bowing out and it's a telltale sign that a boat has been put on it that's too heavy or you get this rear frame pulled back, which is a giveaway that the customer has been hooking onto it with a strap, pulling it out of the water year after year, and now all the geometry of the lift has been tweaked and it's not something you want. If you see any of those items, walk away from the lift, move on to the next one. Now, if it passes that first test, the next thing I'm going to look at is gonna be the cable system. The cables are what raises and lowers this cradle. This is the lifeline to what's holding your boat. The first cable that I look at is always the winch cable. If it's a direct drive unit like this, I put a key in it or take the key fob and I run that cradle all the way down and all the way up. Now there's a few items that I look for here. One, is everything turning and moving in that winch box like it should? Two, am I hearing any weird sounds that are a giveaway that there's something going? Three, I start looking at the cables to make sure that there is no burring or any of the winding coming loose, or anything really rusted and about ready to break. Any of these cables that give you an issue after you purchase the hoist can easily be a few hundred dollar repair and either something you want to use to negotiate your price down or a sign to walk away from the deal altogether. Now, important to note, this particular lift, this is a shore station lift, this one has a winch tube. If there is an issue with the winch cable, it runs through this tube, through a snatch block, and all the way to the other side, and if you're having a cable issue, this is going to be a several thousand dollar cable repair. And it's definitely going to be something you're going to want to use to negotiate or walk away altogether because it's going to cost you some serious bucks to fix this. After I've looked at the cable system and the structure of the lift, the next thing that I move to is the canvas. This is going to be your next most expensive item if you have to replace it. I'd strongly urge you to take a little time, have the customer bring the canvas out, unfold it, and then look at a couple items. One, the threads. If the threads are starting to let loose, you've got a problem. It's basically a trash canopy, or at the very least, it's gonna to have to be sent off to be restitched. Two, mold. This is gonna be pretty easy to see. It's gonna be something black or sometimes dark green. This is gonna eat away the fabric or vinyl, and it's also gonna get in those threads and start everything separating. Lastly, look for obvious holes or rub marks. All of these items, can end up to where you're gonna be spending hundreds of dollars to restitch and patch, or have to get a whole new canvas, which can easily be a couple thousand dollars, rendering the special deal that you think you might have found as a no-go. After the canvas structure and cables are looked at, bunks are the next item. You're gonna find a lot of good deals where they're wood carpeted bunks. Uh, in this case, this lift has poly bunks on it. You're pretty good to go with poly bunks. Take a look and make sure the hardware seems to all be on there, everything's tightened down and the poly's not marred up or smashed up and you're good. If it is carpeted, I would say plan on replacing any carpeted side guides or carpeted bunks within the next year to the tune of $1,500 to $2,000. Definitely something to factor in to the price when purchasing. Once you've looked at all these items and you think you have a good deal, the next thing that constantly gets overlooked is transport of the lift. Seems very insignificant, but I can tell you, depending on the conditions of where the lift sits, if there's access from the shoreline to the water, if a barge needs to be brought in, 
you can easily have thousands of dollars wrapped up in moving a hoist and that's going to add to the ultimate price. All right, I hope this video gives you some good tips as to what to look for when purchasing a used lift. Always consult your local dealer too. They're a great outlet. They're going to tell you whether or not they think it's something that's structurally sound and can actually lift your boat and will stand the test of time. And remember, the sting of a bad purchase far outlasts getting a good deal. Thanks for watching.